Hey everybody, welcome today. We're here to discuss Phytomax 4. We're getting a lot of questions about some of the features and benefits of Phytomax 4. Whether you're looking to upgrade from a earlier Phytomax or you're just looking to move from a different lighting technology or a different LED, we thought it would be a good idea to go over a little bit of the features, benefits, and things that make the Phytomax different from some of our competitors or previous versions of the light. So, these are LED grow lights. Let's start out at the most important part, the LED of that name. So LEDs are the heart of any LED grow light. For those of you who don't know, if we look at an LED, this is an LED light, of course. These individual dots you see here, not the black ones, but the individual glassed or domed lensed parts, those are LED diodes, okay? Underneath them is the diode, but those are LEDs. So those are the individual lights. With Phytomax 4, we were able to grab the latest technology, which really speaks to efficiency. A color is a color. If we're grabbing a 420 nanometer color, let's say for our spectrum, it doesn't really change. 420 is 420. However, the efficiency gets better over time. So why we're constantly upgrading our lights isn't because we want to change. We love our spectrum. It's because we want to absorb the latest technology, the latest efficiencies that gets more light onto your plants, into your garden, less heat into your environment, and everybody's happy. Of course, it reduces those electrical bills too, which is a huge plus. When it comes to LEDs, with Phytomax 4, what we've done is we've tried to maintain our spectrum. We really love it. It works well. It's going to keep your plants shorter, stockier, improve rooting and improve branching and flower site development. However, we are picking up the higher efficiency. So the biggest jump was Phytomax 2 to 4. If you have a Phytomax 2, yeah, you'd get dimming by moving to the Phytomax 4. But that's not the huge benefit. That might be important to you, it might not be. But what you get is a massive increase, about a third or more of efficiency. So that's a huge difference. So for example, if you were running a thousand watt, Phytomax 2, our PM2-1000, and you move to the Phytomax 4 12S, which would be 750 watts, it's going to be about the same light output, but you're paying for 250 less watts all the time. That's less heat in your garden and less money on your power bill. So that efficiency does make a huge difference, both in your grow and in your pocket. LEDs are important, and we've continued to source the best of every color. Unlike our competitors, we can't go to one manufacturer. We have to source dyes from all over because unlike our competitors, we do have a truly complete broad spectrum. We are going beyond par as we say, so we need a lot of different colors and nobody makes the best of all of those colors. So we have to go out, find the best of the best, bring them together to make the Phytogenesis Spectrum, which of course is still in our Phytomax series. So that's the LEDs. Another change, probably the most obvious change, especially if you're comparing Phytomax 3 to Phytomax 4 is the glass. You might not even see it right now. Why? Because we source special glass that is stealing very little light yet allows us to make the fixture compliant with the latest safety standards, which I'll speak to in a moment, and it's going to protect everything. Normal glass is gonna steal like, and I'm talking clean glass, would steal 10 to 15% of your light. That is 10 to 15% less yield if you were to use that glass. We are using special glass that steals less than 1% of the light. So it's not even the same thing. And again, that can make it very hard for you to even see whether you're holding a light or looking at it on camera right now. But we did add glass to the Phytomax 4 series. One of the reasons we added glass is ETL. For those of you not familiar with it, you'll hear the term UL, which is Underwriters Laboratories, or ETL, which is Intertech. Those are abbreviations for the standard that they're testing with. So they're all gonna test pretty much to UL standards, but there are different labs, okay? So people will say, we're testing the UL safety standards, and that's what everyone should test to. Why do you care? Well, if you're a commercial grower, your insurance policy is gonna tell you that you have to have UL safety standard equipment in your grow. That means your DHUs, your HVAC, your lights should all be ETL or UL tested. If they are, they should be ETL or UL tested for your region, which applies to the US and Canada. Uh, in our case, we are US and Canada certified, and they changed some of the rules. They've been developing the rules. LED grow lights are new, but 
even though horticultural lighting's been around for a while, they didn't actually have a standard. We used to have to run under the standard for the same type of light you would find in a warehouse, hanging up in a high bay for like in an Amazon warehouse. But they finally realized this horticultural thing is here to stay, especially with the advent of cannabis legalization across many states. So they've developed a horticultural lighting standard. They have tightened up the rules around that, made it safer. UL and safety standards are just that, they're safety. I wanna be clear. If someone has UL or ETL standards, it doesn't mean they've got a good fixture. It just means they have a safe fixture. It won't burn down your facility and it's not gonna kill anybody. It doesn't have anything to do with how well it grows. So just be clear on that. It is speaking to the engineering and safety of the light. So one of the changes they made is how you cover your LEDs because that's where the electricity is. You'd shock yourself, hurt yourself, those kinds of things. So they did change the rules for how you had to encapsulate or encase those. So we have glass to make sure we meet all the latest safety standards for here going forward. They did just change very recently, early 2024, end of 2023, and they've become much more stringent. So I do believe and we are seeing more than a few lights drop out of the ETL or UL safety standards where they're just not certifying it anymore. So if you are commercial and your insurance policy would be negated or knocked out if you had a fire caused by a non-UL light, I would make sure that any lights you purchase going forward do still maintain that ETL or UL safety standard for your sanity and your safety. We all know that we have fans in our lights, what is often referred to as active cooling. Some people say it's a moving part and it can break. Sure, it is a moving part. They've been making these types of computer fans for literally decades now. In the history of Black Dog, we've never had a light go out because of all the fans failed. Ours are also over-engineered, so any of our lights could lose a single fan and they will continue to run just fine. And in some cases, more than that, they could lose and they'd still be fine. So they are over-engineered. Our fans just don't break. They are really built to last a long time. They're built for infrastructure, for telecom. They're not just a simple, basic junk fan. They're very efficient and they're gonna last. So we have our active cooling that we still maintain. Why does it matter? Because the enemy of LEDs, your investment, is heat. The number one thing that will kill your lights is heat. Our goal at Black Dog is to make sure your investment lasts and pays off as long as possible. And so by cooling the LEDs actively with fans, we are ensuring that your LEDs last as long as possible. If you just use convection cooling uh, for that, where you see the lights, let's say, close to another bench above it, if that gets a little warm, all you're doing is ruining your huge investment in your lighting system. So we do our best to design a cooling system that will make the LEDs last longer and you get more light out of them for a longer period of time. So we stuck with the active cooling for that reason. From an engineering standpoint, it is definitely the way to go. The other thing that it allows us to do is by using active cooling, we don't need a giant four foot wide heat sink. Therefore, this is the best light you can put in a greenhouse. Why? We have about a 30% lower shadow to light ratio than any of our competitors on the market. So that means if you put up a thousand watts of theirs and you put up a thousand watts of ours, we're gonna cast a third or 30% less shadow than that same thousand watt light from a competitor, all because of our active cooling. So when it comes to shadowing, that's a huge thing in a greenhouse, we will give you the smallest shadow to coverage area. Now, those of you that are indoors and don't do greenhouses, you say, well, that doesn't matter to me. And I would disagree in one area. We design a lot of commercial grow rooms. Airflow, as you know, as a commercial grower, is incredibly important for your growth, to make sure you have no microclimates, hot or cold areas, weird humidity issues. So airflow is really important to a good indoor grow. What do you think a bunch of fixtures that are four feet across do when they're four feet apart so there's not a lot of gap between them? They're gonna block that exchange of airflow through your grow, okay? By using a smaller fixture, you get lots of areas for air to circulate around the room and complete that real nice homogenized kind of environment where my plants aren't getting spikes or peaks or troughs of humidity, temperature, or anything like that. So really nice feature. And if you've ever struggled with environmental issues in a room, you know what I'm talking about. And indoor cultivation can present some real circulatory uh, issues indoors from an air standpoint. What you see in front of me is two versions of our light. They're both Phytomax 4. This is a 12S, this is a 2S. Yeah, different power, but why we have these here is to show you the different tops. They have different power inlets. Why? Because we do have two different cord systems. We have the Pro line, which can be used by anyone, 
It is very universal. You can find this cord. It's an IEC, which for those of you who've been around a while, it looks like the old cord you'd use in a computer tower. It's a standard IC cord. This can be found literally anywhere around the world. What's going to change is where you are, the locale plug will. So if you're in Europe, you're in Asia, you're in the US, you can find this plug with your local plug on the other end. That is our standard P line, the professional line, and that is a great plug. We've been using it forever. Very universal, ubiquitous, great plug system. However, if you want to up your game a little bit and you work in a commercial environment, you're like, man, I got hundreds or thousands of lights and I don't want to worry about a cord slipping out or coming loose or a little water working its way in because I spray it or something like that. Well, we got you covered. This here is a locking watertight cord. So once you plug it into the fixture, you're gonna go ahead and put it in. All you do is you, you pop that cord on there and now it's gonna be locked on there. It won't come off until I turn this and release it. So it's what we call a positive locking system. And you just align the two arrows and it locks in. So this avoids any chance of a cord coming out, creating a short or water getting into there. Really nice system, very heavy duty. This is on our C line, our commercial. So we have a P for professional, C for commercial, just a slight upgrade on the cord system. And that's the difference for our power inlets. Now you're gonna say no, but wait, there's another piece in there. Yes, this is what we call our data, or we can more simply call our dimming line. That is the same on both lights, and it uses one just like that, except it's smaller, but again, locking watertight. And we can go ahead, plug that in here, and it's gonna lock. It's not gonna come off until I take it off. This allows you to very quickly wire the dimming system. A lot of companies have RJs and they gotta plug and hook wires together. Ours is incredibly simple. And that once you have a cord connected, I would go ahead and plug that in. And all I need to do to connect that is I grab one of our handy dandy T's, go ahead and plug that in. Again, it's nothing hard. Just push it in, locks in and I could then hook up another cord here and onward and outward to build my dimming system. It's literally plug and play. And because they're keyed, you cannot put it together incorrectly. It forces you to put it together correctly. And then I get to my last one and I plug this into my positive and negative on my standard off the shelf zero to 10 volt dimming system and I'm off to the races dimming which was one of the improvements with Phytomax 3. We didn't have it with Phytomax 2, but we had a dimming in Phytomax 3, and of course we carried it forward into Phytomax 4. This is Growflux, one of our partners for dimming. Um, they sell really nice dimming equipment, very high end, great commercial wireless stuff, but we've integrated with them. So we are fully tied in. So at the end of your run instead, all you'd have to do is plug that into here. And then this is the same type of system. It's a positive locking, just slightly different system. Plug that into their controller and I'm done. It's that simple. It's literally plug, plug and play, and you know, with good wireless dimming control for your entire facility. So we do like the grow flux system. And you might ask, what are these extra cords for that I haven't shown you yet? I just showed you how the dimming system came together. Imagine if I could do the same with my power we do support daisy chaining. So if you go with the SC, not the SP, but if you go with the commercial system that allows for the power, the locking watertight power system, then what you can do is go one step further and daisy chain. So I've got a small bench with a bunch of small veg plants in it, clones, young, teens, whatever you wanna call them. And I got a bunch of these lower wattage lights. Well, I don't wanna necessarily have my electrician pay to have an outlet installed every four or five feet to run these 125 watt lights, our smallest light. Well, I could bring this to the game. I can use our power T, which is just like our dimming T, just a lot bigger. And I could start daisy chaining the lights together by using this daisy chaining system, which again is no different than what I just showed you. I'm just gonna lock these together and I would tee them out and run to the light. So I could have one power outlet that my electrician had to install, run as many lights as I could fit based on the amperage of that circuit and the size of light. You can daisy chain our 1500 watt light together. If you're running it on a high voltage with a good high amperage, you could put a couple of those on a circuit. But this really comes in handy when you've got a bunch of smaller voltage lights and you don't wanna have 20 outlets, I could have two outlets and run 10 lights per outlet just using our daisy chain system that we offer along with our lights. As we've spoken about, we've covered the, the LEDs, the cooling system, the, the power cord system. Let's talk a little more broadly now. This is made here, right here in this building. We build all our lights here in Colorado. 
uh, Phytomax 3, Phytomax 2, we've been doing that for a long time. We are building Phytomax 4 here, so it is built here in America and we stand behind it. And of course, since we build it, we also know how to fix it. So if something should happen to your light, we're not having to drop ship a light back to China or talk to somebody else. We build them, we know how to fix them too, should something occur. And of course, we have our standard five year warranty that we back all of our lights with. You guys see here, as I pointed out, there's 125 watts. This is our smallest light. It is really great for a lot of scenarios, but we go up all the way to our big light. Our biggest one, which isn't up here, is 1500 watts. That's the 24S. The S, or the number before the S, the 2S, or in this case, a 12S, that refers to the number of boards. So if you wanna know why the numbers are there, that's how many boards. So this has two boards, this has 12 boards. It's our 12S, 750 watts. It's fairly simple. We start at 125 watts. The next light up, the 4S, is 250 watts. From there, all the way up to 1500, we do every step at 250 watts. So 250, 500, 750, 1000, 1250, and 1500 watts. But by offering seven different sizes, not just one or two, we believe we have you covered in just about every instance. And of course, it scales up with our big light to massive, massive grows. The last thing we'd point out is, yes, we're building them here in America. Yes, we're here in Colorado. But how long have we been doing this? We are one of the OGs. We've been making LED grow lights for about 14 years now. That makes us a serious grandfather in the LED grow light space. And we take a lot of pride in that. We've seen a lot, we've broken a lot, we've grown a lot of cannabis, done a lot of fun stuff with the lights, and we've learned a lot along the way. And we've brought that to bear on the Fido Max 4 series. So you're not just buying the light and the company that's here building lights here in America, but you're also buying into that experience. You're getting that experience. The bumps and along the road that we face, we've learned from, we've taken our lumps, and we continue to evolve our lighting fixtures to make them better for you, the grower. So just know that you're getting all of that experience along with your purchase, and we are here to back it. All the people here grow cannabis, and we love talking about grow. So if you do run into a problem, whether it's with a light or just with your grow, give us a call. We love to talk about the, the gardens as much as possible. It, it does keep us sane. So. Again, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us and hope you enjoy the lights. Happy gardening. If you enjoyed this video and you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that ring bell for notifications. Thank you.